Hello and welcome to this episode of At The Bench with me, Johnny Petz. And in this episode, we're going to be going over the Red Link Dev Kit and full control for iOS. So to start off, we need to give a little bit of background about what the Red Link Bridge is, because that is a vital part to how this whole system works. So about two years ago, Red released this little module that simply straps onto the back of the camera and creates a wireless ad hoc network. And with this module, Red allowed developers, um, Red users, to connect to the camera and control various functions within the camera that they deemed were, were necessary. So these, these settings include uh, focus, settings, grading, and playback. And one of the first developers to do this was Michael Leblansky. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, I'm really sorry. And his full control app for iOS. And uh, what he essentially enabled users to do was to take every single one of those functions that Red allowed developers to use and put it all into one small, easy app. And in this video, we're gonna be going over those features, showing some situations where it is useful and beneficial to filmmakers, and also do a quick review of what we think of the app and the Red Link Bridge in general. So let's get started. Boop. Hello, come over. Come over to the uh, executive camera car. <laughs> so here we are. Now it's cold in the UK and I don't really want to be outside unlike our poor cameraman there. So I am in the picture car all nicely set up and snuggly. So um, some of the key features that are really handy is when you can't be next to the camera is doing things such as settings. So here we are, as you can see on this image, it's looking a bit hot. So I think we want to bring down our T-stop. So let's bring that down. As you can see, live changing. Let's go down to something like, mm, Let's bring that back a bit more. Um, yeah, let's go, let's, go, let's go with eight maybe. There you go, so we've gone with eight. So also within that, we can also do our usual um, white balance adjustments. Yeah, stay on five, six, we want that. Uh, we can do some tools check, come in, check for our video exposure. When that loads up again. There we go, we've got our video check, so we're seeing where our exposure is. Looking good, let's come back. Loads the image back up, Oop, loads the image back up again. So what's really nice about the app is just how everything's laid out and presented to you. Everything is very easy to access. You can start rolling very easily and it's, it's just a nice experience using this app and everything is where you would expect it to be. So the, 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 that's kind of the main settings panel. You get all your great bits of information like how much uh, is left on your SSD, your voltage, what clip you're on, how many clips you have, the temperature of the camera. There's, there's almost too much information here, <laughs> you know, but you can't have too much information. So now the next kind of bit that is the most exciting bit for those of you who use EF glass is the focus. So here is where you can control through powered lenses the focus of the camera. And obviously we're on a wide angle lens, so you won't be able to get the full effect of it. But essentially being able to pull focus, there you go, you, can, you, you get a slight impression there of the focus racking there. And it's just so handy, you know, not having to purchase a wireless follow focus just for the EF lenses, or if you're on a Ronin or something. You know, it's just a low cost wireless follow focus solution, which is really great. Obviously compared to a Preston or even our DJI focus, it, it's not quite, you know, it's not quite the same as pulling focus. But what I do really like is being able to set focus marks and be able to rack to them. So here we go, We've got, we set a mark, say there, and they wanna set our mark when we're sharp. Now what we can do is we can rack to and from those focus points. So if I just press there, as you can see, racking on both of those as well, which is really cool. And you can obviously set that speed. So we can set that speed to be 0.5 seconds and boom, racked. And that's really, really cool for anything motion control related. So you could have like five or six different points, which other units can't do. So this is something you can only do within this app and this set of features which is really cool. So you can have loads of different marks, hit those focus points each time. And obviously it looks really nice in here as well. Now we've gone in and custom made focus rings for all of our lenses. So you can simply load it up and you have all your distances set up really easily just by simply putting it in front of a focus chart, boom, 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 measuring out the focus points. So that's just a quick overview of the app uh, in that little section there. We're now gonna jump into an on-set environment to see what it's like when we're on-set and some of the trials and troubles of not being able to get in touch with the camera um, if there's crew around and it's very busy. So let's go there. 
So as you can see, we're on a very busy set and there is no way we can get to the camera. The camera crew around the camera are doing stuff they need to do, setting up the shot. So being the DP, the exposure looks a little bit off to me. So I think we need to stop it down a little bit. So we're gonna come in here, uh, F-stop, let's bring that down to, I don't know, let's go five, six. That looks a bit better, I quite like that. Um, let's bring our um, ISO uh, up a smidge. Let's just go to 640. There we go, now I'm happy with that. So, we're gonna roll camera. Now, the chickens are not prepared. They're not rolling the camera, so I can now start rolling the camera remotely. There we go, as you can see, indicating that the camera is now rolling. I can now go into focus. Here we go. So we're gonna, obviously we're on a wide angle lens, so there's not really too much we can do with focus here, but we're just gonna make sure that we're staying sharp on those trees over there. So this is just a really good example of when you can't actually get to the camera and you need to be able to control certain settings from within the camera. So we're just gonna cut that right there. And now, now the director chicken, I don't know where he is, but he wants to see playback. So if we just go straight down to playback down here, boots up on the display, and then we can very easily just scrub through footage. There we go, look at that. And that shot looks really good to me. We're getting exposure indicators here, so I can see that we are pretty reasonably exposed. Maybe we can change that a bit differently next time. So the next section in the coloring suite within the app is the look section. Within here, just like in Red Cine X, you can control a multitude of settings. You have saturation, contrast, brightness, exposure, shadow, your red, green, and blue gain, and your flux control. Also within here, you can do some quick white balance controls. You can very quickly toggle the raw view, view some tools such as your video, your edge, and your geoscope for exposure. You can also very quickly switch to red log film and other previous gammas. So what I really like about here is you can really take that next level in customizability on set for your image. Obviously, it's not like having an on-set grading suite or, or, you know, or being able to um, add a LUT to the camera, which sadly you can't do. Um, but just being able to go in and dial in these few little things to make those little adjustments, just to make that image a little bit nicer on set and to give you that security to know, oh, I can do that with the image, I can do this later. It's really, really handy. And that's why this section is a really invaluable bit to have, essentially. So here we are with Dragon Color 2 and Red Gamma 4. So within this, you can very easily select Luma, Red, Green, or Blue. So let's, for example, with this one, let's bring those shadows down a little bit. Um, let's bring up the highlights just a smidge, maybe. Yeah, and then very quickly, you have something where you can start to grade an image on set that possibly uh, a director might want to see something with a special effect on it, or you have a certain look that you're going for, or something where it's a bit too green or magenta -y, and you can very easily just come in here without having to go through the red menus, because usually you have to go through on the touch screen, go look at it when everyone's crowded around it, and try and dial this in. But what's great is you can be next to a monitor and go, oh, maybe there's a bit too much green in there, let's take some of that in the mid-tones, and see it's already gone slightly more magenta there. So that's kind of an idea of what you can do with the curves here. Really quick, easy adjustments. So to summarize as a whole and give a few pros and cons to about the app and the system in general, I really, really like the app. I think it's one of the best designed apps out there and it's really easy to navigate around. I think he did an absolutely fantastic job designing the app. Some of the uh, negative things about it are, are more to do with, I guess, things that he can't necessarily control with the app staying connected to the system. Uh, there's been a few times when I've tried to connect and for a minute or so it just won't connect. Even turning off the Wi-Fi, turning off the camera sometimes won't fix it. Uh, and then sometimes I'll boot up and first time it connects. And sometimes that can be a bit hit and miss, which means that sometimes I'm not always confident to bring it out on set because if there's an important shot and it goes down or it won't connect, you know, I, I can get in trouble there for you know, not connecting and it makes me look bad as well as the camera and the system. Um, for the price, I think it's over £100 at the moment, although that seems very high for an app. Essentially, you're buying into a whole ecosystem here. You, you know, you've already had to pay you know, £300 for the red link or the hot link, and then you, know, you have to have an app. So I think this is the best app. Reds do make their own app, but honestly, just don't even bother going with that one. Go straight for this app. It is amazing. And everyone that I've had um, use it on set has always given it such huge praise and has always been amazed at being able to sit with a phone and control all those settings. So any Red user, I think, needs to go out and get this. And if you are renting a Red, see if they have this app. With all of our rental packages, this goes out with it. So you have access to using this camera and this amazing wireless feature 
out of the box and as standard. We also supply it with an iPad for those of you who want a slightly larger screen to work with. We found that it can be quite nice in certain situations to have a slightly bigger screen than a small uh, little phone screen down there. So that wraps up this video. I just wanna say a huge thank you to Mikel for developing this app and uh, the relationship we've had with him has been really, really good. We, we've sent him lots of feedback and he's sent us early beta versions and stuff. So thank you very much to him for you know, providing this and the Red community with this app. He's put a really hard amount of work into it and you know, we, we hope, wish you all the best with that. I also wanna say thank you to Red for making this great system. We've now seen it starting to roll out into other camera manufacturers. So you know, Red is always leading the way with some of their great innovative features. And yeah, so uh, rate and subscribe if you want to see more content. Next time we might be in a new location. We're currently building another little setup and another little office space kind of thing for kit and videos like this. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Colour space for colour, great for DaVinci, big workspaces, all that lovely kind of stuff. We've all got a IKEA desk, a nice deep and wide one for lots of storage space and just you know keep it nice and minimalistic. I've got some Bose speakers uh, and then underneath I've got